I was just informed by Steve here that they called a, um, was it a can candidates meeting? It could be an illusion of a candidates meeting. Okay, so I think it could be an illusion of a candidates meeting, just like it's an illusion that they, uh, they actually care about us. So, <laughs> um, anyhow, um, so when, when I put that idea forward to the community about having this community forum, um, there was absolutely no resistance at all. There was no resistance to say, hey, you know, they, you know it's not okay. Um, in fact, you know, the lawyers, the lawyers who represented us are here today, so I want to introduce them as Kathy Boyce Parker and Irene Faulkner. And These women have been just in, incredible um, uh, representatives for us. They have been here for us since day one. When we started this court case, it was started three years ago, October the 14th, 2005. And um, the history behind the tent city for that particular year was that we had three tent cities going. We had, um, the first one was Camp Campbell, Camp Campbell is where we took up the residency of the legislature lawns with the students who were protesting the increasing um, rates of the uh, tuition, how they were being forced to either pay their rent or pay for their tuition. And so um, that forced the issues and they were protesting on the lawns when Campbell came in. And they stayed there for about six weeks and um, what they left behind was a legacy of hope for the uh, homeless that they allowed, you know, to come and stay with them on the lawns of the legislature. So when the homeless were being forced to relocate from there, they moved to St. Anne's. And it, they were at St. Anne's for about three weeks. And by that time, the homeless um, students in that had returned back to school and that again, once again, left the homeless out on the streets that were from the downtown core. And then, you know, from there, after, you know, facing a battle of being shut down and being assaulted and, um, you know, disenfranchised by not only the police but by the community and everything, it went from that campsite to the Cridge, where at the Cridge, uh, park, that's when the most intensified actions happened and that was with the um, um, the police that involved Reverend Al, that involved Father Antonio and myself and there was about 70 people that were um, all forced to um, relocate. Uh, most of them were arrested and at that time um, that was when um, Andrew and a number of other people who were videotaping and everything um, were having their cameras confiscated. Um, I was being told I wasn't allowed to serve food because, you know, I didn't have a permit and, you know, all the lame excuses that the city was coming up with uh, were, were being thrown at us. And then it was like, oh, okay, so, you know, the end result is three years later, um, the homeless are winning their case, but during that three years, the city refused to come to court. Um, we invited uh, David Arthur Johnson in that to um, join the court case in that because at that time he was fighting for the rights to sleep. And so, you know, when David came on board, that's, you know, when things got very interesting too at that point. So. Um, all this stuff escalated from three different camps and the end results are, you know, the city refused to come to court six times, I believe it was. Um, Kathy and Irene will correct us on that. Um, and six times the homeless showed up and, you know, for, you know, our subpoenas and not to be heard. Um, it meant that we took the risk of being charged. And so, um, you know, one thing I recognized, you know, through this thing, you know, being homeless, 
even through this uh, whole process myself, um, it's not a crime to be homeless in Canada. Where the criminals are, are the people who uh, continue to advocate for this bylaw and not to um, be recanted. You know, the criminals who are looking at the homeless and walking past them and allowing them to die on the streets while they have the position of authority that they can make changes. So, you know, at this point, you know, I don't know what more to say, but I'm going to invite Kathy and Irene to come up and, you know, give the legal background on um, this issue and to answer any questions. And hopefully I'll be able to get through to my own videos and show you some up here. So, on that note, I welcome Irene. Today's meeting, it, it got uh, pretty lively and people feel passionately about these things. But the, the intent of this forum is not just to preach to the converted, it's also to address any concerns that the community might have. So I, it looks like mostly it's the converted here. <laughs> But um, there may be people who show up that have questions and they might seem naive to you or they might feel offensive, but I'm hoping that we'll restrain ourselves and won't heckle ignorance because people need to learn about this and uh, we have to remember everybody's a, a person with feelings here. Thank you. in this case. What we want to do today is, Kathy and I will probably be doing a little bit of a dog and pony show back and forth, if you will, but I thought we'd start out by, um, I will take you through kind of the history of this litigation, how it came about and how it evolved up to culminating in June of this year when we finally got to, to court to argue the substantive issues in the case. And then Kathy's going to take over and talk about you know, what the legal arguments were that we made, um, what the, the judge accepted and what the judge ruled on, to try and give you um, an explanation or more understanding of precisely what this case uh, was about and what the final outcome at this point is. Um, it is under appeal, so we'll talk about that later on too. But to start, I think I'd like to go back to October of 2005, and that's the time, that's when Kathy and I uh, became involved. And our involvement um, started really when um, the Provincial Capital Commission, which owns St. Anne's Academy and the grounds it sits on, uh, sought and obtained an injunction and had the people who were camping on St. Anne's property removed. So, forced to leave St. Anne's, a group of people moved just down the road to Bridge Park and they set up uh, a camp there. Um, they came, a few of those people, I have six, seven, eight, can't remember exactly the numbers, um, sought us out and came to our offices one day, you know, to see if we could help uh, where they stood legally. And they were well aware that the city would likely move to get an injunction and remove them from Bridge Park. So Kathy and I, um, you know, listened to their stories and, you know, I must tell you, at this point, um, the issue was really pretty new to us. We'd been watching the news bit, but it was like we were really, really stunned when we, you know, found that there was nowhere, nowhere in the city of Victoria that these people could go. They can't sleep on public on private property because that's trespassing, and they can't sleep on public property because that's against the city bylaws. So to us, it just said, this isn't the way we make laws in Canada. This is, this issue has to be addressed. So we agreed to represent them. So the first thing that happened was